Hello my dear viewers, welcome back to the channel. This is Taz from Taslima Maya Art. This is my contribution to the Easter Craft Collaboration 2024. I'll be creating Easter flowers for you. Please check out the playlist down below for all amazing artists who are contributing to this collaboration. And as you know, I love playing with new techniques and today I'm going to go into the world of sculpture paste flowers. I've tried to buy sculpture paste and it's so super expensive so I'll be making homemade DIY sculpture paste for you today and seeing how that goes. So a big thank you to all of my channel members for supporting this channel. You help me experiment and bring new ideas to you so thank you. Hi guys, so this is my first ever texture paste piece. I really hope you like it. It's actually structure paste which I made at home from scratch so I'll show you how I did that and it's a 3D flower on canvas um, and you can see quite a few different methods employed in this and it was an experimental piece because I'm venturing into the world of texture flowers which I absolutely love. You can see a lot of holographic glitter in the background. You can see a textured background here as well. If you see that, there's iridescent blue black from Pebio rubbed on with my finger on the background texture. There's also a stencil here which I've stenciled and then rubbed on some more paint um, on top of and you've got the petals here which are all 3D um, and again I made the paste for this at home and I'll be revealing all this and more by experimentation and trial and error on my channel today so I hope you enjoy it stay tuned hi there everyone and welcome back I'm going to be doing something slightly different today and I've been planning this for over a year I think really to try this technique out because I'm really into mixed media and I've had these products for longer than a year some of them and I've not had a chance or time really in my busy schedule to do something with them so I want to play around today with texture paste and texture paste is something that I'm super into I have used it once or twice very briefly before when I've done for example a ocean pour and I wanted the beachy part to be very textured and then I poured over that once it was dry so you can see those videos on my channel um, if you wish to where I have used texture before but today I'm going to do something very very different I want to play around with structure um, flowers or texture flowers and see if I can create something unique on this canvas and again I'm pretty much a beginner at using texture so um, in this way anyway so we've seen lots of structural flowers um, lots of videos out there um, people doing wonderful things very skilled artists so I just find it fascinating and I love those um, the look of the flower that's 3D standing out from the canvas so we're going to do that on this 20 by 20 centimeter canvas today so I've got a few products I'm just going to quickly run through them and I've got quite a series of, actually there's more than this there's a big set of palette knives that I got from Timu um, and these palette knives come in all strange shapes and sizes really really interesting ones and um, you can see some of those here um, there's a couple more here as well um, I may or may not be using some of these depending on what uh, how it goes I've also got a few products here so first of all I'm going to run through my colors I'm probably going to be using these colors today so for the background on the canvas I'm going to add texture to the background I'm going to mix the texture in with some of this Diner Pebio iridescent blue black it's a beautiful gorgeous shimmery color I want a really shimmery background. I might add a little bit of this Payne's Grey to that to darken that up a little bit as well. And then I'm going to, I'm planning on stenciling over my texture. Now that sounds insane, but I just think it would look awesome. And I'm going to try and do it with a lighter colour, maybe darken this colour up a little bit. This is opaque, light, ultramarine blue. I'm going to stencil over. I'll show you the stencil in a second. And then what I'm going to plan to do is maybe create some flowers. Now I don't know whether this will work. As I said, I've never practised it. This is literally my first rodeo with this, but I want red flowers. I love the idea of a red rose or red floral petals and I've got primary magenta here from Amsterdam it is a transparent colour um, and I'm going to mix that with my beautiful this little piggy uh, maraschino okay so I've had this again for nearly two years and um, I've used it on some of my projects so I'm looking forward to adding that into my texture just want to give a shout out to Tara Lombardi from Pieces of Tara um, I saw a couple of her videos recently as well where she's playing, playing around with texture also Betty from Oak by Bettina she's really great as well and there's lots of other artists I could mention who use texture in a beautiful ways and are experimenting and playing with it right let's get on with it um, so what we have here is Studio Acrylics Pebio Modeling Paste I've used some of this before for some one or two of my pieces I'm going to mix that in today with this all-purpose filler okay and I've used this again in some of my projects as well so I have used these before but today I'm going to combine the two possibly 50-50 seeing how thick that mixture looks a few other products I've had around for a while I have used before as well in my videos are this opaque crackle Tanya Munt, my dear friend, she um, introduced me to crackle paste a long time ago now when I first started. I love crackle paste I won't be using that today I don't think but I will in future projects like this um, 
modeling paste this is a high density one which means it's much more thicker and to have 3d flowers you kind of need it to be pretty thick people might add things like plasto paris into their mixture um, and lots of other products so you can find that at home as well um, and make up their own mixture at home so you don't need to go out and purchase all these products these these are things i've already had and i was playing around with or hoping to play around with um so we also have structure paste again this is very thick this one is quite gritty this is from viva decor i have used this as well before it's a nice little um mixture as you can see it's very gritty it's like a sand in there really um but i have used this before for a project as well in one of my videos um and also what i have is a couple of other things um, iridescent gel okay gold interference in it this is a pear beer one i've not even opened that yet i've had that for a long time and gel gloss i used a lot of gel gloss but i tend to use the golden one okay so my golden gel gloss is this extra heavy gel gloss and you can also have a combination of these to create your textured flowers or your structural flowers if you wish to another nice little thing you could add if you wanted to create your own mixture um is this it's white gesso primer you could add that in with your modeling paste because the modeling paste is quite smooth and silky and flexible um the filler here as well is pretty flexible as well and it dries without cracks normally it's quite good but i'm gonna experiment with just these two products today okay so i'll move everything out of the way and we'll get started so let's get started i'm going to start by adding a little bit of my um I'll get my palette knife out so this is all purpose filler it's white and smooth it doesn't tend to shrink or sag or anything like that so we're going to pop some of that onto my paper palette i love these paper palettes i've been using them for a long time now ever since i started with um doing artistic creations um and yeah i find they're really really useful and easy to use i also sometimes use a plate which is covered with cling film or serum wrap um, I'm not going to mix too much because I want to see how it works. So we're going to do a little experiment today. Maybe that, maybe I need a bit more because I need to cover the entire canvas, don't I? So we've got enough of that. I'm going to put another 50% of, um, the modeling paste on next. And how are you all doing today? I hope you're having a lovely day, whatever you're doing, and you've had a good week so far. Um, wow, this comes out really quite smooth compared to the other one. I think that's about 50%. Should be okay. Maybe a tad bit more. There we go. So I'm going to probably mix this up now, okay? So I will pause the video so I'm not wasting too much of your time. Time is very precious after all. I'm just going to stir this up now. I'm just mixing it together on my palette here, okay? And I, it doesn't matter at this point if it's not very thick because I'm just using this for the background to begin with. So once I mix this up, I'll come right back to you. And you can see the consistency. It's quite smooth. Okay. Okay, so I'm pretty much done now mixing it up. Okay, so it's really smooth and silky. And I'm going to work quite quickly with it because I don't want it drying out too much. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this. I'll scrape it together and then I'm going to split it in two because I need a little bit for the work I'm going to do with the stencil. That will be a different colour. So once I've got it all in the middle, I'm going to split it up. I'll probably just put a scoop of it on one side. I'm going to work with this side, okay? So if we turn that around, we're going to work with mixing this side up. So I'm now adding my beautiful iridescent blue-black to it. So I'll pop some of that on. That should be enough. And I can also add any piggies or any pigment powders. Yeah, I've got colour art powders, um, pigment powders and other colours as well. So I'm just going to stir that in and see what that looks like. I do want a nice kind of bluey grey colour, really. And if I feel I need a bit more paint, I can just add to that again. Okay, so again, I might add a bit more. There we go. And a little bit of black as well, because I do want it to go a tad bit darker. There we go. And that was a paint's grey, actually, not black. So we'll just mix that up now. That's much better. That's exactly the colour I'm going. So pretty much the colour of this table cover. I'm going to add a little bit of this colour, which is a pearl colour. It's a kind of a turquoisey blue because I quite like the look of that. I quite like that colour. It's beautiful. It's got this beautiful pearly shimmer to it. So let's see how that looks. Let's mix that up now. That's really good. So I'm now going to spread this. Okay. I'm going to spread this on this canvas. And that's, I'm just going to scoop it up, throw it on and smooth it out on the canvas, pretty much. So 
I'll do that off camera to pretty much get where I'm going with this. I'm simply just scooping her up and leveling it out, but I'm not being too precious about how that's leveled up because I want texture, so I'm going to leave it to dry with all these markings in it without actually smoothing it over, okay? So I'm going to do that for a second. Okay, so I've done my textured background now, and I use some palette knife really to kind of just leave loads of scrapes all over it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cover this up in a little pot and wait for this to dry before I do any stenciling over the top. Okay. So now I'm adding some violet acrylic paint to my paste that I mixed up and stirring that in so I can do the next part, which is the stenciling across the top of my textured background. Okay, welcome back. So it's the next day and it's all dry. Okay, and I'll show you how beautiful that looks. I sprinkled some glitter on it as well. And I was um, holographic glitter, so it's really pretty. And it's got lovely dry texture to it. So what I'm going to do now is I've put this stencil over the top. It's a really pretty stencil I've had for a while and I'm going to be using it today. I'm going to add some golden heavy um, gel over the top just to seal in the edges there because I'm going to be using one of these patterns to um, add that extra purple over. So I'm just going to go over it with gel gloss to begin with and seal all those edges up. Um, and I'll come right back to you. So I might speed this bit up. I don't really want any bleeding through when I put the texture paste over the top, but it's likely it might simply because what we have here on the previous texture is obviously lots of ridges and things and it's likely to seep through all of those different uneven kind of surface. So here we go. I'm just going to finish adding some heavy gel gloss all over this stencil so that it seals in all those bits that we've got and all the little gaps. And I'm going to put my mixture here over the top and see how that works out. It might be a complete fail, but until I do it, I won't really know. So let's finish off this little job first and I'll come right back to you. Okay, so I'm just going to add this. I have no idea if this is going to work, but there's only one way to find out, right? It's still quite wet, so um, it's gone really well. So let's have a look. I'm just going to lift it off. Wish me luck. If it didn't work, it didn't work. I'm not going to be too disappointed. It's just uh, playtime, really. Wow, it really did work. There's a bit of gel gloss that seeped under. probably didn't need the gel gloss as much, but this is how it's currently looking. It's super pretty. And the gel gloss will dry clear anyway, so we won't notice it. So that's perfect. I'm going to wait for that one to dry, and I'm going to put flowers across the top. I probably won't do the top part because it's beautiful enough. Because so that's how it's currently looking so far with all the texture paste. I think it's stunning. I really like that stencil. It's gorgeous. So I'll be right back. Okay, so welcome back. So it's drying nicely. It looks really pretty. And what we're going to do is mix up some sculpture paste. So, so that mixture I've made, I added some bicarbonate of soda to it. And then I thickened it up even more. And I made this slight consistency. You can see it's quite thick. Okay, it's probably a little bit too thick at this point, so I'm playing around with consistencies and to thicken it up, I actually added baby powder. Okay, so it's quite cheap and this is the mixture. I've added a little bit of red paint to this one. Um, that's what I've done so far, so I added some red paint. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of maraschino to it in a second. And I've added some bicarbonate of soda, about half a tablespoon of that into this. And it's thickened up a little bit more. You can see it's still sloppy, it's not thick enough yet. So I'm going to add some baby powder to it next. Open that up. And you can see me do that. And I'm going to keep doing that until it thickens up. Okay, so I've added the baby powder, mixing it up and seeing what happens. Again, this is all about experimenting and finding something that works. I've seen so many different recipes that are homemade with so many different products from the cotton wool that you get in nappies to um, marble dust um, to sort of all sorts of things that people can add in this mixture. Plaster Paris is another popular one. Um, there's no plaster in here, obviously. People add gesso to it. Um, lots of different things, but I'm just simply going to thicken this up using the baby powder until it's the right consistency for me. It may or may not work long term. Um, this is an experiment, so we'll see whether it cracks or stays intact or what happens once I've got it thick enough. So again, trial and error and experimentation and having a bit of fun, seeing what happens. Again, you can see it's thickening, thickening up quite a fair bit now. 
Um, I'm going to add a bit more and then maybe stop there. Should be hopefully enough. Oops, I'm getting talking about all over my artwork down there. Let's move this. Yes, it's definitely thickening up loads now. Because that talcum powder is sucking out all of the moisture in here. So once this is thick enough, look, it's really thick. I want it to hold its shape, really. So I'm looking, oh, it's still moving. It's still moving on my palette knife. It doesn't, it doesn't hold its shape. You can see it fall right off. So you know you need to thicken it up a bit more. Until it starts holding its shape and it doesn't move a bit like this okay so i didn't obviously scoop that up properly i was just playing with it so i'm going to get to the stage where it stays and holds its shape on my palette knife um obviously if you've got a lot on your palette knife it will fall off but if you just have a little bit and it's holds its shape you know it's okay and uh, good enough to do a petal it's getting there almost there should do the trick i hope Yep, you can see it's much better. See it staying there, it could topple over because there's a lot on my palette knife and it's still staying there. So that's looking really good. Okay, I can do a little experiment and just have a look in here. So if I just move it out in here, clean my palette knife off, it's always important to have a clean palette knife. And then clean that off. And then start scooping bits up and see if I can create a bit of a petal. Or if it's too wet, I'll know. Okay, it's still too wet, we can see. There's the top part of the petal just flopped over. Still too wet, a little bit more then. A little bit more. And we're we'll getting there now. Let's try that experiment again. So clean off the palette knife, move it all up. And I'll just smooth it across here. And then clean that bit off and then I'll just start scooping up so I'm taking some short strokes obviously this is just a test in here I should do it really on a flat surface rather than a cup so you can see again I've made my if you can focus on that I've made my petal part of my petal and it's sort of holding its shape it's not too bad still a little bit wet I think it's almost there and what we can do then is we can get a plate and we can just practice laying it down there we go Okay, so you can see that this is a petal that can be shaped and curl it over a bit. Okay, my knife is a bit dirty at the minute, I need to clean it off really on a rag, but you can see that that's one side of a of a potential flower and it's not really whoops, it's not really moving. So I think it's looking good. Okay, if I left it out for a few minutes it would dry up really fast anyway, so I don't need to add any more talcum and it's good to go. So we're gonna try and make some flowers in a minute with this to apply to the canvas here that's drying really nicely so I'll be right back and very quickly I want to show you one piece that my three-year-old daughter's been working on and I've helped her with this it's got crackle paste and extreme sheen rubbed off onto the crackle paste and this was a kind of a failed ball in the middle but it's looking really pretty she's made these out of air drying clay um, and she's going to paint them and glue them on on this and maybe put some sort of embellishment like um, calligraphy of her name in the middle and that's the piece she's been working on and I'm really proud of her she's only three Sarah so I'll pop that over there I will get on with it and while you're here, I want to show you some little pieces that I've done in the past, which I've started to embellish. And it's really rudimentary at the moment. This is a piece that I embellished or started to embellish using simple lines, really, and an outline of a woman's face. You can see it was um, actually a paw I did as part of my birthday collaboration, one of the smaller ones I did afterwards. And I've just shaded it in a little bit using a damp brush. Um, so let me know what you think of this one. I think it's quite pretty, very different, isn't it? So I'm just adding the maraschino into this. And I'll just take a bit of it. And see if I can mix that in now. Give it that shine, hopefully. And I probably need a lot more, but this is just an experiment at this stage, so I'm going to see how it goes and plays out. So, wish me luck. I'm going to give it a go now, I think, and see if I can create a rose petal. I'm going to use my number three palette knife and this particular paper. So I'm going to take a fair bit of this mixture and place it here. And because I don't want it drying out, I'm going to try and put a lid on it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just work this in. It's quite textured actually. I'm just going to go like this and smooth it out. 
Now, I'm no expert. This is honestly the first time I'm properly trying this. Let's try this to see if it works. So I'm going to use my palette knife to try and... I'm not even sure how thick I was meant to. So you can see what I've got here, if you can focus on that, is kind of a, a flower, okay? Um, I can scoop some of that off if I want to, like this, and put it back on. And say I've got a bit of a flower and a curving flower, and I want to pop that right in the middle here. I'm going to just go for it, hope I don't mess this painting up, but there's only one way to learn, right? So I'm going to... there we go. Okay, and I'm not sure if it's actually too wet still, or if it needed to be stiffer, but I'm going to try and see if I can shape that particular thing and then we're going to do it again it's drying out so fast in this room because it's so warm in this house so i'm going to try now from the other side so i'll clean that up you can see me just making sure i'm not taking too much when i pick it up now to do a flower um a petal from the other side i'm going to literally just make sure my knife is clean kind of is i'm going to do the same with this side and just So you can see I've got a kind of a petal, it's not much really, I needed more. I'm going to put that on this side. I'm probably going to chop the bottom off again. Okay, so let's do that. I might shape it a little bit here. I'm just it was a bit... Oops. See, that didn't really go well, but I can fix it because it's the inside of it. Okay, so you can play around with texture paste. That's what I love about it compared to boring. You can actually correct things easier. That's my first petal, so I'm going to just tidy up my palette knife and just knock this side over. I probably should have gone like that. There you go, you can knock it over, you can fold it over even, and correct it, there we go. No. Okay, let's do that again some more. Always clean your palette knife in between applications. So we're going to do this again, so I'm going to take it from here, and if you notice, I always keep the top of my knife equal. And how thick you lay it down also, also matters, because you can see now I've got this beautiful petal. It's curved over. Okay, I'm going to again take the bottom off because I don't want too much on my canvas. And I'm going to apply it here. Okay, so I can apply it underneath this one or on top of it. It's really up to me. I might try and lift this up and apply it underneath, but I'm not sure if I'm going to mess that up really. Okay, there you go. And I might just fold this part over if I can. There we go. And then let's do that again. Oops, I'm doing it from the wrong side and I need to do it from this side. So I've got a really nice big petal here, curved right over. I'm going to place that underneath this one. And again, there's a lot on there, so I don't really want half of it there. So let's try and place this on top, I think. There we go. I've been touching this side accidentally and I shouldn't be because it's not dry yet. So there's another petal here. And again, it's still probably a little bit wet. It probably needs to be thicker looking at it. But I can sort that out. Anyway. So let's get on with more. I'm going to come back to you and I've added a few. So this is what the flower is now currently looking like. And I'm going to add a little bud here. So I've got my little bud here. I'm going to add that right here. Okay, you can see that. Again, always wipe your palette knife before you start messing about with it. This is my little bird, I'm quite happy with it. Really pretty. I'm going to do another one by here, or maybe one more. So let's do that. We'll just smooth this out first of all. It's getting really thick now getting almost unworkable so having a wet rag 
Two plates over it always helps. So I'm gonna start. So you can see again, I've got a beautiful petal here, okay, and it's popping over, I'm going to pop that one. I'm not sure which, where I should have pop it, here. There we go, wipe my tissue, my petal leg up, and then just tidy up the bits. If your uh, mixture gets too dry, you can add a bit of water to it. And then mix it around until it's a bit more malleable. So if it's too dry, you can add water. If it's too thin, we can just add a bit more talcum powder. And it's pretty much the same as sculpture paste. The problem with sculpture paste is so expensive. I tried to order a pot from one of the more popular brands, and it has to come from abroad, and I have to pay a ton of taxes. So a tiny little pot will cost me close to forty-five pounds with just one colour, so I thought why not just make it myself and see if I can make it myself. With any luck these will dry well, but I'm pretty hopeful that it will dry well. So see it's a bit more thinner now, so I'll just pop some more of this in and finish this piece off. And then I'm probably going to add some vines and things around and some leaves. So thank you for joining me again on my channel, hope you're enjoying this video and just to mention there was a couple of great talented artists up before me um, and they were Marie Louise Art, Kim's Creations, Michael's Making Art, and it's art by Donna. So please do go over and show their channels some love. If you miss them, I'll put the playlist down in my description box below for you too. So here I'm embellishing by adding some iridescent purple semi pearls that I've got. These are synthetic, and I'm just adding them. Okay, so just to show you, I've got this Berlin pen. I'm going to be using this to add some detailing. So let's try that. I've also got this other colour, kiwi, okay, but I think I'm going to go for the deep green, to go with the red, and we're just going to add some details. So let's try and do this. So you can see what I'm doing here, I'm just adding bits at the bottom, and I can shape that with a little skewer as well, so I'm just going to turn this right around and have one coming up this way. So, so far so good. It's drying nicely. It hasn't cracked yet or anything. You see the litter from this angle and the lovely texture and the um, stencil texture at the back there. I might rub a bit of darker uh, paint on that um, purple just to tie it all together. I might also put some darker green on the um, the stalks um, and the leaf there as well just to tie it all together. But I'm quite happy with it so far. It is, the paste itself is going slightly white, um, but I can just touch that up really with some maraschino um, afterwards and add a bit of depth to those petals as well, adding a bit of darker red to them. But I'm quite happy with how it's gone. This was my first ever try, remember. I'm super happy with it. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, this is what it currently looks like. It's kind of drying at the minute. I think it's super pretty. What do you think? Um, for a first try, I think it's really, really cool. I love it. Lots of texture in this piece. Beautiful texture piece. So you know the drill, if you liked this video or you enjoyed it or found it informative or useful, please do leave a like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. So here is the final piece. I'm trying to capture that shimmer for you. It's really hard to capture on camera, but it's beautiful. It's got the holographic glitter on it and it's got that beautiful iridescent colour on it as well, the blue iridescent. And I think it's stunning. It's not... Obviously, um, something that's perfect um, because I am a beginner in this technique, but I am having a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with this. I'm just painting in the bits that went white there, as you can see, because of the talc. So next time I might use a different um, medium to put in this, such as the marble powder or marble dust. So I'm going to leave you now with some flyovers and some close-ups and different angles to see this piece. It's a beautiful sculpture paste flower um, and some buds there with 3D elements and texture paste as well as stenciling for the background. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it did, please let me know in the comments below and I will see you again next week. Bye for now. Oh and before you go here are some affiliate codes for you to save some money on supplies for yourself with the companies I'm affiliated with.
So I have a video coming out on Sunday as usual with the Fluidat Express and I hope to see you there. Bye for now.